Before the cardio MEMS procedure begins, we must set up a hospital electronics unit. Turn on the power button on the back of the unit. Press the new implant button and wait until the system connects to the network. Once connected to the network, the patient list will be retrieved from Merlin.net. This may take a few minutes. For manual entry, please refer to the Hospital Electronics Unit Quick Guide. Select the patient's name from the list downloaded from the Merlin.net website. Once you highlighted the patient's name, select the OK button. Insert the USB drive provided in the sensor box. It is important that the sensor information loaded into the hospital electronics unit matches the sensor implanted. Verify that both the patient and sensor information is correct. If this information is correct, press yes. We are now ready to begin the CardioMEMS implant procedure. So these are the supplies we typically use. We'll start with a eight French standard sheath. We'll upsize using a 10 French sheath and we'll continue to upsize to the 12 French sheath to deliver the sensor. We also use a seven French PWP catheter. This is a catheter that's seven French in diameter and the distal port will take a 0.035 guide wire and this can allow a nice distal injection. And if you need to switch to use a different wire to access the left pulmonary artery, this PWP will take that wire. And then we usually have a 0.035 exchange length angle glide wire available in case we have a problem going into the left pulmonary artery. So we're going to start with giving lidocaine to the right groin. So here's an eight French sheath going into the right coming from our artery, a little pressure. And then we'll use a long wire to dilate and upsize to the 12 French sheath. So here's a 12 French sheath to dilate with. Sorry, a 10 French sheath to dilate with. And then we'll put a 12 French sheath in. Okay, so we're going to go up with this 7 French PWP. It's got a distal balloon that we can inflate and deflate, and it's got a distal port that takes an 035 wire. So we're going to use this to take our pressures and to do our selective pulmonary angiogram. Okay, so here's, here's the right atrial pressure. We're going to advance into the right ventricle. So here's the right ventricular pressure.
and we'll advance to the pulmonary artery. We're going into the left pulmonary artery. And here's the wedge pressure, which is normal at about six to seven millimeters. Here's the PA pressure, which is also normal. And then we'll get a sample from the pulmonary artery to measure cardiac output by FIC. So your, your O2 sat's 100%. Okay, so we're going to do a pulmonary angiogram and an AP projection. So that was three, three cc's per second for five total cc's. And you can see there's a nice caliber pulmonary artery that's approximately eight millimeters in diameter. The branch is relatively long. Now we're going to go to an LAO projection to make sure it's a posterior branch. So here's a 60 degree LAO projection and we'll repeat the injection. And you can see it's a very posterior oriented branch. So we're just gonna estimate vessel size at about eight millimeters. If you wanted to measure, you could put up the balloon or do something else, but we're just gonna estimate it. We'll go back to a PA projection now. So right where the tip of the balloon wedge catheter is, is where we're going to plan to implant the cardiomems device. And if you look, there's a little bit of coronary calcification and an LED stent there. And we'll try and put the cardiomems right at the top of that rid. So this is the cardiomems wire. It's a wire made by a company called Neometrics. And it's a moderate support wire that's 0.018 in diameter. And we're going to put it in without putting a bend on the distal tip of the wire. So here's the device, it comes in this delivery hoop and we'll just pull the device straight out. And the sensor is on the distal portion of the device. The sensor is tethered by this tethering cord. So to prep the device, we're gonna flush the distal port. It's an over the wire system. So we'll flush the distal port and then we'll take the sensor the sensor is placed in heparinized saline and agitated for 15 seconds. Now the device is ready to be inserted. This is the delivery portion of the sensor. So to release the sensor, you'll go counterclockwise here and slowly pull this out and this tethering cord will release the night null hoops and the sensor will deploy to the vessel. So we're going to insert the 0.018 cardiomems wire into the distal port of our 7 French balloon wedge catheter. And we're going to put it in a distal branch in the left pulmonary artery. And there's two branches here that go inferiorly. We're going to see if we go in the middle branch. If we go into the left branch, it'll still be okay. But it looks like the wire took that middle branch. And so we'll put it distal here in the middle branch and we'll try and take care not to put a, a bend into the distal portion of the wire. So now they're all the way down that middle branch. And so now we'll walk out our seven French PWP and we'll keep our wire as distal as we can. I'm gonna do the rest of that, Ken. Get it. So we're going to insert the 0.018 wire into the distal portion of the cardiomems delivery catheter. So I'm gonna hold the sensor as it goes through the 12 French sheath to prevent the sensor from moving on the delivery catheter. And I'm gonna step on
fluoro as I do this so the wire stays in position. There's a little resistance as you go through the sheath, and as you come out the sheath, the resistance frees up. So here's the sensor coming through the right heart. We're in the IVC going into the right atrium. And now we're going to advance through the tricuspid valve. We're going to come over into the left pulmonary artery and you can see the sensors tracking without moving. We're going to advance it to the place you want to deliver it, which is, which is right around here. I'm just going to step on Cine to document the position. So it looks to me like we're just distal to the rib that we wanted to implant the sensor, and the vessel here is probably eight to nine millimeters. So this is a good location for the sensor implant. You can see the distal wire isn't bent. You can see the distal portion of the delivery catheter. So everything looks real good. Okay, so we're, we're happy with sensor position, so we're gonna release the sensor by going counterclockwise on the tethering cord. So we're gonna go counterclockwise, and under fluoro, we're going to slowly pull the tethering cord the length of the system. And to make sure the sensor releases, we're going to gently advance the delivery catheter just a little bit. And then under fluoro, we're going to pull the delivery catheter back we're gonna make sure the sensor doesn't move at all. And the sensor is staying in place, it's not moving at all. Now the delivery catheter is at the sensor, and now it's above the sensor. We're gonna keep our wire position so we can reinsert our PWP to remeasure our pressures and calibrate the sensor. You wanna walk that out, Ken? Okay, you can put a, push it forward a little bit. Uh -huh. Just keep coming with us. Okay. So now we're going to reinsert our PWP. I'm going to take care not to put the PWP catheter into the same vessel as the sensor. So after we insert it into the main PA, we'll gently pull our wire back and go into a different branch. So here's the PWP coming to the main pulmonary artery. And then we're just gonna pull our delivery wire back. The sensor's not moving. We're just gonna gently advance our catheter. Now we're gonna remeasure our pulmonary artery pressures and calibrate the sensor. Place the antenna under the patient's back, approaching from the side where the sensor was placed. The goal is to position the sensor close to the center of the antenna. Look for signal strength greater than 70% and the color should be green. To set the PA pressure baseline, wait for the screen to fill with a stable pressure waveform and then select the set pressure baseline button. Enter the mean pressure from the pulmonary artery catheter measurement and then select OK. Wait for the screen to refill with a stable pressure waveform and then confirm that the sensor mean pressure matches the catheter PA mean pressure within one to two millimeters of mercury. Repeat the PA baseline step as necessary to achieve a good match between measurements.
Enter the reference cardiac output value and select OK. This number comes from the cardiac output calculated earlier in the procedure. Give the waveform time to stabilize and then press the take reading button. Enter the pulmonary artery catheter pressure reading from the PA catheter that is currently inserted into the patient. Confirm the reading is correct and then press yes. It is recommended that you repeat the take reading step three times. Remove the antenna from the patient's back. So there's different ways to get hemostasis. We favor just doing a figure eight suture under the 12 French sheath. So our suture goes under the sheath. And then it comes on top of the sheath. And then the sheath comes straight out. And you pull down on the suture. And that creates a small tissue bridge that provides enough pressure to where you get immediate hemostasis. Press the exit button. The system will then connect to the network and transmit the baseline calibration readings that were entered earlier during the case. Ensure that the thumb drive is inserted into the side of the unit and press OK. The baseline calibrations that were entered into the unit earlier will also be saved to this thumb drive. The information was saved successfully. Press OK. If you would like a printout of the readings taken earlier, press the printout button. And then select the readings that you would like to have printed. While the printing is taking place, the system will then default back to the main menu. Once the printout is completed, press the shutdown button. The system will then ask you to confirm the shutdown process.